Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. Just about every contractor I know has one of these lightweight portable table saws, but it's rare indeed to see one with a station built around it. This station allows us an outfeed table, a nice extension to the right. We've built an auxiliary fence to rip those wide pieces, and we have a simple portable way to bring the station up to a comfortable working height. I'll show you how to build our table saw station next, right here in the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. I can't tell you enough how handy these saw horses are, both here in the workshop and out on the job site. These were built about 10 years ago, and they're still as good today as the day they were built, even though they spend a lot of time outdoors. The design comes from my father, who built dozens of these saw horses while he was in the construction business. They're light and they're simple. Now we're going to need a couple fresh ones to support our table saw and the surrounding station. The design for the saw horses and our station is in a measured drawing, and you'll hear more about that before the program ends. Now I want to start with the saw horses. So I have to cut a couple pieces of two by six for the top. But before we use any power tools, let's talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now what I'm gonna do is square up the end of the two by six and cut a couple pieces three feet long. Now I wanna take that two by six and bevel the edges at 15 degrees to give me the flare of the legs. So I just come to my table saw, set it to 15 and then slide my fence over so that it's right at the corner of the two by six and we'll run it through. With the saw still at 15 degrees, I'm using my miter gauge to cross cut the legs. How many times have you seen saw horses made where the legs are cut square? This is a refinement that allows me to have full bearing surface at the floor and a nice flush top. Next, I wanna make these gussets. They not only provide support for the top piece, but they tie the legs together. So I've taken a piece of three quarter inch plywood and ripped it to eight inches wide. Over the table saw, I've now set my bevel gauge at 15 degrees, and I'll make the first cut. With that cut made, I can flip the piece over so that I'll get the opposite bevel, measure along the top edge, seven inches, take my bevel gauge, which I've also set at 15 degrees, transfer a mark to the front edge, and make the next cut. Now that I have one cut, I can use it as a pattern. Flip the piece again, Take the one I've already cut, mark it, and then cut it. Now here's something that my dad didn't do. Use a high-tech, waterproof construction adhesive to add some strength to the joint. And what I'm going to do is tack the leg in place and then permanently attach it with some screws. I'm going to pre-drill for some number eight by one and five eighths inch screws. Now dad didn't have these. He probably used cement coated nails. I'm using galvanized deck screws. Okay, now we'll put the gussets on, on the inside first. Once again, a little bead of construction adhesive to strengthen the joint and we'll attach them with some screws. Okay, that's one. Now we'll assemble the next one. The saw and the surrounding extensions are gonna sit on a framework which sits on our saw horses. To join the pieces of two by four together, I'm gonna make some half lap joints. So I've set up the table saw with my dado head cutter I'm going to use my miter gauge and the fence as a guide. Now I've set the fence so that it matches the width of the 2x4s and the height of the blade is exactly half the thickness. Now that takes care of the corner intersections. I have one more dado to make right here 
in the middle for this cross piece. And for that, I have to slide my guide fence out of the way. And I've put some indicator marks to show me where I have to push the piece through. These lap joints go together with a little bit more of that construction adhesive and some one and a quarter inch screws. Now this piece of half inch plywood is going to be used for the deck to support the saw. I've cross cut it here, but I'll rip it at my table saw. I've just plowed out a dado in that piece of plywood for the platform, and that's going to be for one of the vertical members. A little bit of carpenter's glue on top of that frame, and set the plywood in place, and tack it down with some one and a quarter inch brads. While the dado head is still in the table saw, I'm going to go to the opposite side of that back piece and make four dados for the braces that are going to support the outfeed table. Before I can do any assembly, I have to make a few notches in these plywood pieces. And that will allow for the oak trim that I'm going to install on the top piece. Well, now I'm ready to do some more assembly. So a good bead of glue along the back edge of the platform, and I can install this piece. I'm going to clamp it in position and get it perfectly aligned before I actually drive any screws. Now, this is going to give a lot of structural strength to our saw station. This piece of plywood, when it's secured to the back, is like a beam. It won't deflect. So when the weight of the saw is on the table, and we're moving stock through it, it'll stay nice and straight. Now this plywood to plywood butt joint, I'm just gonna glue it together and put in a couple brads for now. Later I'll add a glue block to the inside. Now this intermediate partition just gets set in the dados where I've already installed some glue. I'll set it in position and attach it with a few more brads. Now I can install the glue block to reinforce that corner. Just set it in place and tack it with some brads. Now this is the first of four braces which will support the outfeed table. Cut at a 45 degree angle and clip to receive the oak trim later. A couple of the outfeed table braces need a notch, and that's so our fence system will clear it. A little glue in the dado for the brace, and I slip it into the slot, and I want to have it down a half inch from the top, so I've made this little gauge block. And when that's flush, I can nail it from the inside with some one inch brads. The top for our saw station is made out of three-quarter inch thick melamine, and I picked this up at my plywood supply house. It's particle board that has a thermally fused medium density laminate on it. It's slippery, so the material will slide over it easily, and it's pretty tough. Now, the first thing that I have to do is make some dados on the underside to catch these two cross petitions and the back piece. So I've set up my stack dado head cutter in the table saw, and I'll run the back groove first. Now a couple cuts to remove the part of the melamine where the saw fits in. Here I have the top upside down and I've laid out the slot for that auxiliary fence that's made with the pipe clamp. I'm going to use my circular saw to make the cut, but to get a nice straight cut, I've clamped a straight edge in place. And I'm simply going to plunge the saw through and go from mark to mark. Now I'll readjust the straight edge and make the second cut. I've just plowed a half inch dado in some two inch wide pieces of plywood. 
And I'm going to use these pieces on top of these angle braces, and this will allow me to attach the brace to the underside of the top. And we'll just attach these pieces with glue and nails. Okay, now I'm ready to put some glue in the grooves of our top and then install the whole assembly. Well, now we can begin to see our saw station come together. Now, tomorrow we'll wrap the exposed edges of the melamine with some hardwood. Then we'll make an auxiliary fence using a pipe clamp like this so that we can make full use of this extension table. And I'm hoping that we'll have enough time to make some accessories for this saw station. Good morning. I'm getting started today cutting some slots for biscuits in the edge of my melamine. This particle board isn't very good for holding mechanical fasteners, but by using the biscuits and glue, I'll get a real good connection between the banding and the melamine. Here at the front edge of the saw, I have a square cut where the table saw is and a miter at the corner. With the piece cut to the correct length, I can now mark for my biscuit slots in the yoke. This special glue bottle meters just the right amount of glue into the slot for the biscuit. Then I'm going to run an additional bead to give it some more bonding surface to the edge of that melamine. We'll put the biscuits in. And then I'm going to secure the piece temporarily with a couple brads that will hold it in place until the glue sets up. Now we'll repeat that process all the way around the perimeter of our saw station. To take the sharp edge off the corners of my oak, I'm simply using a chamfering bit. And after I finish the oak, I'm going to chamfer the top edge of this opening for our rip fence so that the melamine won't chip. The next step is to provide a slot for this miter gauge. It won't be able to slide through the front extension unless I have the slot. So what I'm doing is taking a straight edge clamp, setting it the right offset, the distance between the edge of my router bit and the edge of the base to create a slot for that miter gauge. That's good. Now I can route the other one. What I'm doing here is mixing up some two-part epoxy. It's a five-minute quick-setting epoxy. I've drilled four holes for these quarter-inch by three-and-a-half-inch carriage bolts that I'm going to use to secure the saw. I'm going to drive the bolt so that it's almost all the way in, put a dab of this epoxy near the head of the bolt, and then drive it home. The last thing I want to have happen is the bolts fall out when I remove the saw. Okay, now that hole will allow the sawdust to fall out from under the saw. This little notch is to give clearance for the factory-made fence that comes with this saw. Now let me show you how that notch works with this rip fence. It allows me to slide the fence over so that it's just about at the edge of the table. It maximizes this fence. With that done, I can now build the auxiliary fence, and that's what this slot's for. The first element of the fence are three little blocks. And I'm just going to tack them together because I want to drill a hole through all three at the same time for the pipe. Now the diameter of our pipe falls somewhere between an inch and an inch and a sixteenth. So to enlarge the hole, I'm using my oscillating spindle sander. Okay, that's going to do it. Now using my stack dado head cutter with a sacrificial fence, I've taken these two pieces of melamine, which are the sides of our auxiliary fence, and made a rabbit on the end. And that's so that I can receive those little blocks that I just made. 
Well, let's try out our saw station to rip a piece for the top of that fence. While the dado is still in the table saw, I've taken a scrap of that top piece of plywood and made a rabbit in each edge. And that's going to sit over the melamine sides, tying the fence together. That fits good, so now I can run the actual piece. Well, now I'm ready for a little assembly. Glue in the rabbit and in the dado at the center. And you just set the blocks flush with the bottom edge. And the trick here is I don't want to distort this as I put it together. I want all the pieces to stay straight and not twisted. Now the other side. Okay. And now before I actually pin it through the end, I'm going to just put a clamp on it to make sure it's pulled together tightly. And a couple one-inch brads will hold it together. Okay, now I can flip it over, take the cap piece, put a nice bead of glue in that rabbit, and then we'll nail that to the top with some brads. The clamp we're using for the fence we've had around the shop for many years. The orange ends you can find at any good woodworking store. The black iron pipe you get if you happen to have a friend who's a plumber. Now, the two parts come off on the ends. This one is the adjustable end of the clamp, and this end is actually threaded onto the pipe. So once that's been threaded on snugly, we can slide the clamp through our jig, or our fence, and then just set the adjustable end on. Now we can bring it over to the saw station and set it in place. Drop it over the edge and into that slot, and then snug it up. Now you can see that it easily slides back and forth. And to secure it, you just tighten down on this screw. And as you can see, that's not going anywhere. Now the only problem that I have is that as I move it, sometimes this end wants to flip around. So I'm going to secure the pipe so that won't happen. At the middle cross piece of plywood, I'm going to drill a hole through and then put a screw in. Now that takes care of the hole through the wood and a small hole through the pipe. I'm going to enlarge this hole in the pipe because the screw actually isn't going to thread into the metal. Okay, now I can slide it back into position. Get a screw, and it just acts like a pin, stopping it from spinning. That'll do it. What you've just seen me do is make a nice square cut on this piece of sheet stock using my panel cutter. Now, the panel cutter is an indispensable item for any table saw. This one is made out of half-inch thick plywood, has a hardwood runner underneath, which rides in the slot for the miter gauge, and it has a fence along the front edge, which is absolutely square to the saw blade. Now, you could try to cut a piece like this using a miter gauge, but it's hardly accurate enough. This piece of melamine is going to be for a base we're going to build for the small saw. Here I have a piece of oak stock, which is just the right width to slide in the miter gauge slot easily, but has very little side-to-side -side play. Now I want to cut it so that it's flush to the table saw surface. Now what I want to do is locate the runner. And I'm going to use a big framing square to make sure that it's absolutely square to the edge of our base piece. We'll just put a line on there. And I'll hold it in place while I drill some holes with some small screws. OK. Now I'm going to put a little bead of glue down and secure one end of the guide in that pre-drilled hole. Now with one end secure, I can now check it again for squareness and drill the rest of the holes. Now I want to trim the panel. 
I left a little extra in the distance from the guide to the saw blade because I want the saw to trim it and that'll give me an accurate guide for cutting future panels. Now this piece of oak is going to be the fence for our panel cutter. It goes at the front edge and the first thing I want to do is apply a little bit of glue to the back side and I'm going to secure the corner that's closest to the saw blade end first. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over and make sure that I'm perfectly square to the cutoff end. Put a mark and finish securing the fence. Okay, let's see how square that cut is. Perfect. Now let's build a push stick. I like to use three quarter inch thick plywood to make push sticks and there's any number of forms. I happen to like this kind of a shape. It gives me a nice wide base where I can hold the stock down, a good size handle, and I'm plenty far away from the saw blade. The few minutes that it takes to make one of these, or even several, is a small price to pay to save your fingers. To make the push stick a little more comfortable to hold, I'm just rounding over the edges with a quarter inch radius bit. Okay, that's perfect. Now there's one more thing I want to make. What I'm doing here is laying out for a feather board. I've taken a piece of hardwood and I'm putting marks about every quarter of an inch, about six and a half inches long. Now what I want to do before I cut along those lines, I want to take my miter gauge and cut the end at a 30 degree bevel. Now I'll go to the bandsaw. Now here's where a feather board comes in real handy, when I want to make grooves in the edge of stock. I've set up a stacked dado head cutter, and what the feather board does is it keeps the stock tightly up against the fence. And one thing that I like to do is after I make the first pass, I turn the piece around and make a second pass, which makes sure that the groove is perfectly centered. The other thing that happens is the feather board prevents any possibility of kickback. And as I push the piece through, you can actually see the feathers move. Well, now I'm going to put some casters on this end, and that'll allow me to stand the unit up on end to roll it around and store it. Now, when the saw station is not needed for production or out on the job site, it just stores up against the wall with the saw horses right in front of it. It doesn't take up very much space. You know, I'm really glad that I built this project. I've been meaning to build one of these for years. 